There's a lot of rivalries in Family Guy. Peter and the Chicken, Stewie and Bertram, Meg, and, well, everyone. But perhaps the most enduring feud is between Quagmire and Brian. Glenn's absolute disdain for his best friend's dog came to light in season eight, Jerome is the New Black. In it, Peter reveals to Brian that he can't hang out with him or the gang anymore because Quagmire just hates him. I don't get it, why, why wouldn't Quagmire like me? Because he thinks you're annoying. This comes as a shock to Brian, and he soon sets out on a mission to make Glenn like him. But all of his efforts spectacularly fail. Finally, a needy Brian takes Quagmire out to dinner, where he begs him to explain why he hates him. So leading on to an almost two minute roast, and Quagmire certainly didn't hold back, saying he thinks Brian's a sponge, egotistical, and just plain boring. That's the worst of it, Brian. You're just a big, sad, alcoholic bore. <sighs> And so begins their bitter feud, and one of the longest running jokes in Family Guy. So in this video, I'll be looking into the complete timeline of their rivalry, and see if their relationship has evolved over the years, from enemies to maybe almost friends. So before we start, quickly write down below if you're Team Brian or Team Quagmire, and let's see what side has the most support right off the bat. It's easy to forget that Brian and Quagmire were quite chummy at the start of the series, even when competing against each other on The Bachelorette. In one early episode, Quagmire even drove Brian and Stewie cross country. Although the duo did leave him strapped to a bed and took off with his van, so perhaps this could have sowed the seeds of hatred in Quagmire's mind. But I think the moment that really made Quagmire dislike Brian was in season six's The Man With Two Bryans. In it, Brian asks to stay at Quagmire's house when his family adopts a new pet, and Quagmire's only request was for him to ignore his new girlfriend's disfigured leg. But when Stewie comes to visit and openly describes her deformity with disgust, she runs off crying, and Quagmire blames Brian. <laughs> Damn it, Brian! Now we come to the aforementioned season 8 episode when Quagmire openly reveals his loathing of Brian. But the funny thing about this is that his speech lists many, many things that Quagmire is guilty of himself, particularly lusting over Lois. In the very same season, the writers only built upon this feud. In Quagmire's dad, Glenn's parent Ida comes to town and informs him that she's a woman and will be getting her surgery while in town. And Quagmire, he couldn't deal with this revelation and they soon fell out over it. Later on, Ida heads to a bar and meets Brian, hitting it off so well that they end up getting it on. The next day, Ida and Quagmire manage to make up and she tells him all about her new man, or new dog. Glenn's ecstatic for her until he finds out who her new bae is. And on hearing the news, he enters the Griffin's house and beats the crap out of the pub. And despite the savage beatdown, Brian still has the very last word. I your dad. This storyline will be picked up again a whole 10 seasons later, when Brian dates Ida again. But we'll talk a bit more about it later on in the video. It has to be said that for a show like Family Guy, where they play it fast and loose with its thin continuity, the show does a lot of callbacks in regards to Brian and Quagmire's relationship in particular. It may be because that the writers love this dynamic, amping it up further in season 9's Teagues for Two. Here Brian feels lonely and so attends Quagmire's pickup class, which is something he ain't too pleased with. Fine, but you lick yourself once in this class and you're out! It was here where we finally learn the origins of Quagmire's womanizing ways. He discloses to Brian that the true love of his life, Cheryl Teagues, dumped him, sending him on a path of sleeping with many, many women. He then immediately roasts Brian and puts him down again, so being tired of being ragged on, Brian pulls the ultimate revenge and uses Quagmire's pickup moves on none other than Cheryl Teagues. When Glenn finds out, he plays him his own game by dating Brian's true love, Jillian, leading on to a very awkward double date, with the two boys trading insults and then trading blows, with their dates eventually ditching them. With them now wallowing in self-pity, it looks like the two were finally able to make up, until Quagmire smacks him with his car. These two now have a lot of emotional baggage, so you can't help but wonder if they would just be a lot happier and a lot friendlier if they had a whole clean slate. And they got this opportunity in season 10's episode, Forget Me Not. 
Peter, Joe, Glenn and Brian all lose their memories and wake up in hospital. And when they return to Spooner Street, Brian assumes that he's Glenn's dog because he sees all of his turds on his lawn. And look how big your doggy cage is. You could fit a human in there. But in literally no time at all, Quagmire starts to find Brian absolutely insufferable. And he gets even more annoyed when Brian can't do a simple trick. You know, this actually reminds me of a quote by Milton. Shut the f up. It's becoming more and more apparent that Quagmire could care less if Brian just dropped dead, and he would actually get his wish in season 12's Life of Brian, when the pooch is run over and finally killed. Even at the funeral, Quagmire is far more interested in watching videos on his phone. Some fans have even speculated that they think Quagmire was the one who hit Brian, possibly renting a car to hide his identity. But what do you think of this theory? Let me know in the comments. But as we all know, nothing is forever in the world of Family Guy, so Brian was of course eventually brought back. And despite Quagmire's utmost contempt for the doggo, he has shown some rare glimpses of empathy towards him. In season 13's Brian the Closer, Brian has a fight with Peter over his chew toy, which ends up with his face colliding with a fire hydrant, losing all of his teeth. Feeling awful for him, Glenn takes pity on the pooch, giving him a check and the name of a great surgeon. And with his help, Brian gets a set of shiny new gnashes and lands a job as a realtor. And how does Brian repay Quagmire? Well, he rips him off. Underpriced waterfront property that's guaranteed to appreciate in value. He tricks Glenn into buying a luxury apartment complex, which turns out to be a crappy, dilapidated house. And with only 72 hours to cancel the expensive contract, Brian dodges the man with all of his might. Even when finally caught, Brian stalls him even more until the deadline is finally up. And for this, Quagmire quite rightly knocks Brian's new teeth out. I feel this could have been a real turning point in their relationship if Brian hadn't fucked it up. But we must remember that Quagmire isn't so innocent himself. It turns out that Glenn has a side hustle conning old women out of their inheritance. And when Brian and Stewie find out, Quagmire promises them a cut of one woman's estate if they manage to kill her. But it turns out that this wasn't necessary as the news report said that she died of natural causes. But Quagmire thinks that Brian still went through with it and makes him hugely scared of the dog, enough to give him his cut with an apology promising never to mess with him again. This promise didn't last long though, when the two went head to head for town mayor. In season 17's Adam West High, Brian runs for office and Quagmire does so too, just to spite him. Uh, let me think. Oh yeah, out of spite. Spite for you. So now their rivalry is exposed to the entire town and they soon got into mudslinging contests during their debates. Brian finally decides to confront Glenn on his campaign bus and during their heated argument, Brian tosses a glass at the driver's head. You idiot! He's allergic to getting hit in the head! The bus careens off a cliff, saved only by a branch, so suspended in the air with the looming threat of death, the two have a rare heart to heart. They explain why they each want to become mayor, Quagmire to have a street named after him, and Brian who just wants free pancakes. Brian then compliments his rival on his intelligence, but Glenn refuses to return the favor. But you have to. I'm not gonna say something I don't mean just because your ego needs to hear it. So with the bus about to crash into the depths below at any second, Brian makes a break for it by running towards the top to grab onto a branch with Quagmire holding onto his waist. The two get to safety, and if you thought that this incident would bring the two together, then you'd be wrong. Brian didn't heal tensions either when he decided to date Ida again. After their one night stand together a few seasons back, Brian starts seeing her again, soon becoming an official couple. They're happy, and everyone's happy for them, all except for Quagmire. And things only get worse when Brian starts to play daddy. He's not my dad! I already have a dad and it's my mom! So Quagmire then gives Ida an ultimatum, him or the dog, and Ida, not wanting to lose her son, decides to break up with Brian. And in my opinion, this was a total dick move on Quagmire's part, hugely discounting Ida's happiness in order to save his feelings. But I guess to be fair, who would be happy with their parent dating a dog? Although Quagmire is listed at length all the way he hates Brian, I think he left the biggest reason why off his list. He's a cat person. And as dogs are their natural enemies, I believe this forms a huge part of why Quagmire dislikes his neighbor's pooch. 
Quagmire loves Pussycat so much, he once opened up his own cat cafe in season 18's Cat Fight. But Brian the Buzzkill sets out to close it down, forcing Glenn to put down all of his beloved kitties. And when they next see each other, they finally release years of pent-up anger. But when Brian is run over, a concerned Glenn comes to his aid, and it's here where Brian apologises and Quagmire opens up and finally becomes vulnerable. They actually seem to make it up here, and Quagmire even takes Brian for a nice little walk. Finally, a real turning point for the pair. And like all emerging relationships after years of baggage, there's bound to be some lingering grudges. As we've established, Quagmire loves a good pussy cat, but he also knows that a solitary cat lifestyle can doom you to a sad and lonely existence. So when Meg adopts a kitty, Glenn knew she was heading towards a dangerous dark path. So teaming up with Brian to save Meg from becoming a cat lady, Brian bursts into Meg's to rescue her, but is quickly overwhelmed by an army of cats. But just before Meg puts on a sweater to complete her final transition into crazy cat lady, Glenn saves the day. Volunteering to wear the sweater instead, he then takes her place as the crazy cat person. Quagmire, no! It's okay, Brian. I'm already gone. Yes, Quagmire is a cat person through and through, but he's also a hound dog. As he would say, and do anything just to get into a lady's pants, including pretending to like dogs. Which was the case in season 20's Must Love Dogs. In it, he meets a beautiful woman called Carrie, and the only downside is that she loves dogs. So to keep up with the charade, Glenn asks Brian to be his pet. There are not enough tennis balls in the world for me I to- have six. I'll do it. And Brian doesn't commit from the kindness of his heart, but more to have a front row seat for when it all eventually crashes and burns, speeding things up by presenting Kerry with an engagement ring apparently from Glenn. Kerry then moves in with her many rescue pups, which is basically Quagmire's worst nightmare. But the charade finally ends when the dogs get loose during their engagement party and Quagmire finally blows up and reveals the truth, leading Kerry to dump him for lying. As a gloating Brian revels in Glenn's misfortune, Quagmire vows revenge. So the very next day, Glenn sends Seamus over to Brian's and gets him to read out his massive, massive screenplay. Quagmire! Quagmire asks for Brian's help again in season 21's The Stew Away. When Quagmire flies to Paris, he finds Stew in his luggage because he was playing hide and seek with Brian. As we've seen in previous episodes, Glenn can be a pretty decent dad when he wants to be, and he and Stewie have a great time bonding. But when the baby goes missing, a desperate Quagmire calls Brian for help. So, taking the first plane out, Brian helps Glenn in search for Stewie and eventually finds him in a cemetery. And in a super sweet moment, the three of them share one big hug. I'm really hoping that this marks a true turning point in their relationship. The writers have included a Brian and Quagmire episode in every single season for the last five years, so I fully expect more of Quagmire and Brian's misadventures.